I've always been interested in society, interested in religion, philosophy. But I was never the kind of person, I was more George Carlin-esque. I just, it's like, yeah, let's go to the spectacle. <laughs> the spectacle, this freak show of our society. Look at how crazy and, 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 and apathetic and the ridiculous beliefs. And I separated myself in an elitist way. That was my mindset back then. I was not trying to save the world, but I did have an outrage for it. And I did wonder, it did, it did create angst, obviously, or I wouldn't have made that film. And I think it was deeper in me than I realized. And once the zeitgeist phenomenon hit, it really lifted out of me. This actually is who I am. This right. is what I need to do. I can't live with myself if I don't talk about this shit because it's, 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 it's not right. The disease is our refusal as a global civilization to very fundamentally share our resources, compounded by this fear generation that's perpetual, which is driven by imperialism, which is no mystery if anyone studied basic history. Uh, but the economic system is where all of this resides. And the problem isn't that the intelligent people out there aren't aware of this, it's that no effort is being made to actually go to, to this root cause and make a decision to put pressure on all the establishments of the world to begin to work together. And the, the real danger, ultimately, is that we're no longer a closed society. If, if uh, say, India and Pakistan decided to go to nuclear war for basic ideological or resource reasons, in fact, that would affect everybody on the planet. So this is now a public issue across the entire world. And until the economic model is addressed, which perpetuates scarcity, which perpetuates competition, which uses empirical tools such as war to expand this empire, no different than a corporation expands a monopoly, we have a long and dangerous road ahead of us. The best way to explain that is to look at the fact that our economy is based on consumption, and advertising is the arm of creating artificial demand. And without that arm, and it's so polluted as you know, I can't even imagine what the world would be like without advertising, but without that arm, you wouldn't have people aspiring to things that are highly irrational, abused by our social inclusion. When advertising presents something to the community that seems to be something that some people want, it spreads like a virus and then everybody wants it. It's a great step forward, but I, I don't think it's enough because rarely do people that speak of democratic socialism actually get to the heart of the, the root structural problems that I just spoke of, a society based explicitly on scarcity, uh, an infrastructure that's still oriented around competition. You know, we can have cooperatives. I'm all for all these different things we could do to revise the financial system, complementary currencies, again, cooperative corporations and so on. But until we realize that the system is fundamentally unsustainable, it's fundamentally competitive and oppressive. It's like a river, Tom. And we can put up barricades, we can put up dams to try and hold the natural flow, the natural logic back of what this system is. Or we can work to change direction and create an entirely new system, which is what I really hope for and what I bank on, because I don't think uh, the, the piecemeal things that we're seeing, even if successful, will really overcome what we're facing right now.